Hey everybody, I just want to make a quick video talking about some of the common errors in Python and what you can do to avoid them. Really love to cover a lot more about how to think in a way that is like how to. I, I wish I could convey the complete understanding of how objects and things work in Python, but unfortunately, we're not quite at that level yet to really appreciate some of this stuff. And I don't think it would be. I. I it's not that I think it would be a waste of time to cover, I just, I'm not 100% sure that it would be fully appreciated at our current level yet. But I'm going to try to touch on it. So, um, so the first error that I want to talk about, though, we'll just jump right into it. First error I want to talk about are, uh, well, the errors that come up like this are name errors. And basically, the way they, they happen in Python is they happen if you're trying to reference a variable that either doesn't exist, like you typoed it, or literally just it, Python doesn't know what you're talking about because that error doesn't, like the variable doesn't exist at all, or which is basically the same thing because Python just reads things literally. Um, or if you're trying to reference a variable that's not in the same scope. So like here in my example right here, you can see that we are trying to reference this sum int variable, but it's not defined. But like yeah, it is. It's a variable that I define within this function, but that's the key point. It's within this function only. From this line, you can see the exact line where the function stops. From this line down, like below this line, and within the same indentation, like it doesn't exist. So, or within this, within another indentation, it doesn't exist. Within the same indentation, it does. Like if I just indent this line one more line forward, then it's fine. But because it's here, it doesn't it doesn't understand what I'm trying to reference. And that's for a purpose. It might seem kind of weird, like, okay, why does Python understand it when it's, like, moved four spaces over to the right? Well, again, it's because if I were to do that, we would be inside of the function. So, basically, the reason this happens is because of a thing called scope. Every function has its own, like variable namespace it's like a little space like a little cloud every every function is like on its own island so when you define variables or parameters inside of your functions you can reference them as much as you want as long as you're referencing them below the line that you define them on within the function but if you try to reference them outside of the function it doesn't work however there is a key difference if you define a variable not inside of a function, like here, we define this variable, we can reference that variable in this function. If I were to make another function, if I were to say make a line here and then put this variable inside of a function, this would no longer work. We'd get the same highlighting as we would there. So the reason, this might sound confusing at first, but I'll break it down for you. The reason that this works here is because we are what's we are in what's known as the global namespace. The global namespace is the namespace of all of your entire file. So if I define a variable outside of a function, it can be used in any function. This sounds like one of those things that you would hear someone say and say, wow, that sounds amazing. I should do that all the time. Here's the thing. You should definitely try to avoid doing this because this is just... I hate to say lazy because I feel like that's kind of harsh, but it's really not a good idea to do this. If I were to import this this module, like this Python file, into my Python file, the reason this is a problem is now as soon as I import this variable into my file, it's going to make this variable name taken. Like, if this was, like, a really generic variable name, it would suck, especially because it's like, well, now I really can't, now I really can't use this variable name. Or if I do, I'm going to be, uh, or if I do, I'm going to be basically, like, reassigning it. And it, this variable could be very important to the key functionality of this code. And if I, if I, maybe I just don't know that this variable already exists, so when I go to rename it, it could break something, you know? So, I mean, that's why you should try to avoid it. It's just, it litters the namespace, and it's not a very good convention. So you should try to avoid doing anything in the global namespace. You should try to just 
do everything in, in functions and classes and objects and stuff like that. I would really, 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 really try to avoid doing anything in the global namespace. But if you do, it can be referenced in other functions, and that's why we don't get an error here, but we do get an error here, and that's because of scope. But I've already made a whole video talking about scope. I'm not going to sit here and ramble on about it forever. So we're going to kind of move on. But that's basically when you get name errors. So if you ever see a name error, like down here, that's where it's happening. Because the thing that you're referencing, whether it's a variable name, whether it's a module you're trying to import, whatever. These things, it, if they don't exist, or if they're not defined, or if Python doesn't know where to go to find them, that's when you get these kinds of errors. Because it's like Python saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but let's move on to the next error. So the next error I want to talk about is index errors. And this one is pretty recent because we kind of just started talking about indexing. I'm going to go ahead and comment out this line so that we're not getting highlighted errors all the time. So um, if we have a string, like, again, we're working in the global namespace. I know I just told you not to do this, but this is just for educational purposes. So if we have an example string here, like s, okay, um, basically we can uh, index that string and we could say that um, we could say that we want to use only a certain part of that string so let's say we just want to print out the first letter so let's do that it should be t i probably should have picked a different variable name so let me just use like or a different string word there we go yeah because i don't want it to have the same letter on both so if we try to run this code now it should print out Oh, because I specifically wanted to show you guys that when you use one as an index number, you get the second item. Because remember, indexes start at zero. And on the topic of errors, this is something I see a lot. Is people forget that indexes start at zero. So remember, when you use one, you get the second character in your string. Now, speaking of which, let's go ahead and get the first character. So when we do this, we should get W. See? Now, if you want to get the last character, sure, maybe you already know what the length of the word is. So, you know, word is just a four-letter word. That's pretty obvious. And remember, index starts at zero, so we could just do this. We could just say three, and that should give us D, right? Yeah. So the thing is, that's fine, and that's perfectly valid. But there is another way. You can do a negative one here, and then you can get the last letter of the, whoops, and you can get the last letter as well. One other possible method, although this is a little bit more wordy to do, but you could just get the length of that variable and then subtract one. Whoops, if I can freaking type, maybe. That should theoretically do the exact same thing. But you can also just completely omit this entire part and just do negative one, and it works perfectly fine. Although, um, and the reason that works is because that's a specific thing built into Python. When you're indexing something, you can just type negative one, and you will get the last item. This doesn't just work for the last item, by the way. We could get the second to last, which is R, in the exact same way. But the key difference here is that index doesn't start at zero when you're going from right to left on indexing something. Maybe right to left isn't necessarily the best way to explain it, but you know what I mean. Um, but, however, if this is what I really wanted to talk about, if we use a number that doesn't actually make sense here because word is only like a four letter word and we're saying I want the sixth item in this string. Well, that doesn't exist because there's only four items in the string. So if we do that, we're gonna get an index error. And then you're gonna get like index out of range. Whenever you get this error, what I want you to really ask yourself, the way you solve this error is you take a look at your index number and you take a look at the thing you're indexing and you say, okay, does it make sense in the context of this? Because like like I just said, that's exactly how a human would look at it. They would say, well, this is a four-letter word. If Forget about programming for a minute. If I had someone here and it was like their name was Jerry or something, I was like, hey, Jerry, give me the sixth letter of the, of the word word. They'd be like, what do you mean? There is no sixth letter. It's just W-O-R-D, one, two, three, four. Like, what do you mean? So Python's basically saying the same freaking thing, you know? It's like, what are you talking about, man? You're, it's like, go find me a unicorn. It's like, what do you mean, hello? So that's the same freaking thing. So that's when you get index out of range errors. Now, typically when I see these errors and when I get them myself as well, 
they're typically in more complicated situations like um, two really common situations I see this in that aren't quite so easy as this example is um, one is when you're in a loop and you have like I here and so like if you were doing like for I in range like I don't know whatever if I ends up being a value that ends up being kind of like that five then you get this error because maybe you're doing something maybe you're like saying i plus one or something and that's just one too many higher than the index or something so definitely something to keep in mind um the the advice i would give for that is maybe utilize debugging or utilize print statements to see what your eye was before it got to that point especially if you keep running that error over and over and over again every time you try to run it and it's like well now i can reproduce it so let's just print and see what i was or let's just use debugging and figure out what i was and that's how you would solve that error essentially um, but just know that when you when you want to see the list of like the possible values that you can use let me show you a tip actually if you want to see all the list of values that you can use for the item of like indexing what i would recommend something to help you learn maybe is i would say print range wait hang on sorry print list range length of whatever your variable is this is a big big thing here there's a lot going on here but i will explain each part of it but let's go ahead and run this and then i'll show you what i'm talking about first so look at this we now have a list value um we have a, a list sequence data type here and we haven't talked about lists yet in the class but um just bear with me so this is all the values we can use for i or whatever indexing we want to use so what this is telling me is i could go here and i could say example string zero and that's w and then one which is o as we saw in the first time i ran this two which is r and then three which is d all those are perfectly valid if i try to run anything else any other number at all well except for the negatives but only negative one negative two negative three negative four so i guess this doesn't include negatives so i mean maybe keep that in mind i guess but for all the positive numbers that we can use for our indexes, those are all the valid ones right there. Um, so that's a good way to know how to do that. Now, let me, I told you I was going to tell you like every single part of this. So let's break it down. Um, so the first part is, well, we have the string. So we're saying word here. So this is our variable because remember this equals that. So we're basically passing in the string of word right here. But this could change. I could add whatever I wanted to this. Like I could keep adding and concatenating strings and all that. So that's why I have it as a variable because it helps so I don't have to like retype it all here. But anyway, so we have the example string here. Then we have the length of the string. That's the next part that we're doing in that. And the length of the string should be four. So, so far we're at four here for this whole part. And then we're passing that into the range function, to which is a generator sequence. Um, and then what we're doing is we're converting that generator to a list. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can print out what its values are. Because if you just try to print the range, it's not actually going to print the values. That's why I had to make it a list. Um, we could iterate through that. I could, we could totally iterate through that, you know, like traversing by index and stuff. But I just think this is easier just to show you just in a, a single example instead of one by one. But essentially that's all your values for all the possible like values you can use for indexing so anyway moving on that's basically your index errors though if you're ever oh i didn't say the second common thing i'm sorry the second common place that i typically see this is let's see we talked about for loops i already forgot what the second most common place that i see this in let me think for a minute second common place that i typically see this Let's see, the first one was in loops. We don't necessarily know what the values are. Oh, okay, I remember, I'm sorry. The second common place I typically see that index out of range errors are, um, I would say when the item that you're supposed to be iterating through is empty for some reason. Like, for example, in the, like here's a real world example. I made a Python script that will essentially look through a list of photos and scan them and determine if they are, 
up to spec and what we need for the project and all that and it has to go through certain criteria like if the file size is right and like because it can't be too big because it has to post it to other you know online services that require certain file size limits um and then like if we've already posted that photo before we don't want to post a duplicate photo and things like that so it has to run through certain criteria about the photo and um there were times in which maybe for example we would ping the server that provides us with the photos and maybe we just couldn't really get back an, an ideal response and we didn't have a way to control for that in the code i mean obviously there is there are ways to do that we just weren't doing them because we, you know it was just mainly just me and i didn't have that knowledge yet but that's how it goes you know you start projects without really knowing the full scope of what you're doing obviously but that's how you learn you know but um, but there were times anyway where it would ping the server and it would get it would try to get photos and it couldn't get a proper ping back of like actual data and photos to iterate through. Um, mainly not due to the servers being down. It was mainly just my internet being shoddy or something usually. Um, so it was more my network and my computer's fault for that. But when it would try to move on and it would try to say, okay, we have it. Python was assuming that we had a list of photos to iterate through, but we didn't because we didn't actually get a proper response. So in that case, we were trying to index that list and go and say like, okay, I want the first photo and then I want the second photo and blah, 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 blah. And we were trying to index that list and it was just giving us index out of error or index out of range errors like constantly because of that. Um, and again, that's one of those places in, in, in the real world. That's one of those instances where it's like, it's not always as simple as the examples that I gave. Sometimes it's really complicated. Sometimes you don't know that the data that you're working with just doesn't exist. I mean, just this week I had to deal with code for physics. Um, I was writing uh, some code for my physics class that analyzes photos and finds the uh, like acceleration of an object using like computer vision, like OpenCV library. And, uh, and NumPy arrays. And it had to like load the photo into the or load the video into the like thing and essentially extract each frame. And then the next few lines of code were trying to work with this frame object that it had created, but it didn't load properly from the file or something. So it was like giving us weird errors. And that's kind of on the similar topic of what I mean is like, sometimes you're trying to do things with things that just don't exist in the first place. And that's where like index and name errors come in. That's why I wanted to cover those first because those are probably one of the most tricky errors possible, despite being the most simple in theory. Because th those errors seem like something that would be so simple. Like, okay, my variable isn't defined. Duh, I just, whoops, I just didn't define it. Like, that's just, you know, n rookie mistakes. But no, it's not always that simple. So um, I just wanted to talk about those because that is important. And it's important to keep those things in mind when you're writing your code. Sometimes the thing that you expect to iterate through just won't happen like it just it, it's empty like you don't need to iterate through something that's empty or it just hasn't been defined yet so you're going to get those errors anyway let's move on so the next error i want to talk about is the syntax error these are obviously the most common when you're starting out but they're harder to talk about because they can happen a million ways you know when i was in when i was growing up i was in band in my middle school and there's one quote from my percussion teacher he always told me something or percussion instructor teacher coach i don't know what you'd call him anyway he my percussion leader the leader over our section i don't know what you call those people anyway um he always he always quoted this thing to us and he always said there's six million ways to do something wrong and there's only one way to do it right and that's kind of how i feel when it comes to syntax errors it's like i can't legitimately like or logistically cover every single syntax error it's just not even possible there's way too many so i just can't cover them all but one of the common ones that i see a lot is forgetting to put a colon at the end of certain kinds of lines for example this is one i see a lot people forget that you need to do a colon at the end of for loops or at the end of if statements for example so you know those are a really big one you also need to do them with context managers as well, like with open, 
uh, I don't know, example.text and write mode. Whoops, that's not right mode. As text file. Terrible variable name, but it is what it is. So actually, that's not that terrible, I guess. If you're expecting a text file, I suppose. So, you know, in that instance, you do need a um, colon. Now, if we try to run this, we're going to get another error. And we're going to get another error that I forgot to put on here, but I just now thought of. And that was exactly for that reason, the indentation error. Because it just made me think about it as we were talking about loops and stuff. So remember, this is just a... I can cover this one super quick. But remember, when you were writing your code, if you're writing a function, you need to indent the next section of code underneath. Including the doc string, preferably. Um, but yeah, you need to indent the next section of code. And just a good general rule of thumb that I've found in Python is... Anytime you end a line with a colon... Just expect to indent the next line. Honestly, just do that. Because, like, if I if I wrote this function and I say, I don't know, for i in range of some integer, then print i, okay? Now when we run this code and we pass in an argument, we should be able to then iterate through that range up until that number and then just go through it. But notice, when we finished writing the for loop, we had to write another indentation here. Obviously, I know you guys kind of know this, but my point is, this is important when it comes to what I was talking about before, about ending lines with colons. And if you have, like, an if statement, you say, if i is equal to 1, then, I don't know, print i is 1, I guess. I don't know. Pretty obvious, but, you know, if i is equal to 1, then print i is 1. If I want to do other things, though, like... Say I want to make an elif statement, like maybe else if i is 2, because they can't both be 1 and 2 at the same time, so we should use an elif statement here. So the else if statement says, I don't know, print i is 2. Right? It's pretty obvious. But what I'm saying is, everything here, every, notice every time we use a colon, look at that, we're indenting the next line. Only if you're using a colon really at the end of the line. There are times where you use a colon in Python that isn't necessarily at the end of the line. For example, type hinting. I can show you this super quick. Remember, we said we wanted them to pass in an integer. Well, look at this. We can use type hinting here. Uh, sorry, type hinting. I think I didn't enunciate that properly. Um, and now, when someone goes to call our function, let's just get rid of this nonsense for a minute. Um, when someone goes to call our function, um, we're going to say example function one, and then we use parentheses. Notice it's telling us, hey, we, we prefer this to be an integer. Now, the arrow none here we didn't put that that's another part, part of type hinting we haven't really talked about in this class um but what that means is this function returns none and we wrote that here i mean it was written like if you looked at the uh thing it did say it returns none um but see notice if i go to type here about like what i want to pass in sorry let me adjust my mic i kind of shifted around a little Okay, notice if I go to type in an argument here, say, I don't know, 2, then it should tell us what it wants us to pass in. Well, I have to actually redo the type thing here. So it's telling us, this part is highlighted, it's saying, okay, I want you to give us an integer. So I did. And it tells us in our doc string here that this is any integer that you wish to have 5 to and that you wish to have the global value added to. Now, I guess I probably could have worded this better because it makes it sound like I'm changing the integer, and that's not really true. I'm just printing what that would be, what the sum of those would be, but not necessarily changing the integer. But it is what it is. So, anyway, I just wanted to cover the indentation errors. We're going to quickly move on here, though, because I still have a few more errors to talk about, and they're very, very important. And we're already, like, 20 or 30 minutes into this video, so move on. So, the next few errors I want to talk about are all related to, well, except for the assertion error, but these next two errors here are all related to objects and object methods. And we have not covered objects in this class, and we will not cover them until basically the last thing that we do, which kind of sucks, but I totally get why. I mean, we have some, we have a lot of stuff to cover in this class. And really, objects are even though they're the last thing we cover, I, it literally is last but not least because you do use objects like every single day when you're coding in Python. I mean, literally, even just using integers, like an integer is an object. It has its own methods. It has its own attributes. 
But we haven't covered objects yet, and I'm not here to start that lecture. That would be a whole hour in and of itself. But what you need to know, though, is that these data types have certain ways that you can interact with them. And some of these ways are valid, and some of these ways aren't valid. Some of these ways are already defined, and some of them aren't really possible. For example, let's take two variables here. Let's, let's work in our global space here. So actually, let's just do it down here. I want to have a little bit more cleaner room here. So let's define another integer. Let's just say, I don't know, example integer is going to be equal to, I don't know, three. And then example string is equal to, I don't know, word, I guess, because we used that before. Why not? So we have two different data types here. We have an integer and we have a string. I know this is going to sound really obvious. You're like, Logan, I know what data types are. Well, duh. But what I want to show you is they have different ways of modifying and interacting with those data types. For example, if I press the dot here, watch what happens. Look at all this crap. What is that? What the heck is all this crap? Look at this. It just keeps going. And then it has all this weird stuff. What is this? It's underscores. What the heck? So what I want to show you is these parts here that are all underscored, they are what is known as like, well, I don't really know the exact word for them necessarily, but they're basically like built in things by Python that are like special attributes or methods. Um, you won't end up using most of these, but what I really want you to pay attention to though, since we got that out of the way, is all this stuff. Because these are what's known as object methods. And you can use them to modify the data that your object represents. So for example here, or they, or they can return some metadata about the object. For example, the count here will count how many times this appears. Like for example, we can say count and then we have to use parentheses because it's a method and it tells us, okay, um, we need to pass in X, which is a string. And we can also use when we want to start and stop within the string, but we're not going to cover all that. But we could say, I want to see how many times W appears in the word. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and run this code. I'm trying to make sure if I didn't have any other errors. Um, so, oh, and then we have to print that. Now, technically, this isn't a good variable name anymore because this doesn't actually represent a string anymore. It actually will represent an integer, but we'll see that here. So this is one because, duh, there's only one W and one. But see, now this block of code now represents an integer, but it was a string. See, this is a string. But this now makes this an integer. So we are now changing the data type. And that's what I want you to know about objects and, and things like this, is that every object has some way that you can modify it, get data about it, things like that. And that was one way that we could modify the data type. Now, let's do a different method. Let's do something a little more easier to see. So let's change every letter in this to an uppercase letter. Now, I could have just typed that, duh, but maybe I want to, like, do this somewhere else in the code. Like, maybe I don't want to actually change the original string. I just want to print what it would be if it was uppercase. Like, here, we're not actually changing the original string. We're just kind of making a new, sort of, not really a copy of it, but we're making a modified version of it that we can then print out. So, now, it print out in all caps word. It might be kind of hard to see from the text like size and everything, but it print out in all caps word. This is what's known as an object method. Now, the reason I say all this, again, we're not going to cover a whole lecture on objects and stuff, but the reason I say this is because you might get certain errors like type errors. And this is more so not to do with the objects themselves, but more so if you're trying to do something with a function built into Python, for example, that just doesn't really work. Like, for example, if I try to use the sum function here, I have to pass in an iterable. Now, for those of you who don't know the terminology, an iterable is something that can be iterated through, like a list. We haven't really covered lists, again, but let's go ahead and cover it real quick. Not lists, but we'll cover, like, what I mean here by iterable. So, I could pass in a list, and this should give me six technically this function returns the integer so we're gonna have to print it so let's print the function call and let's see if it gives us six like we expect unless i failed kindergarten and just don't realize it yet i mean maybe okay so yeah it gave us six but see watch what happens though 
if we try to say sum 1 plus 2 plus 3, like, that's not going to work, right? So it's going to say type error, int object is not an iterable. And this is the kind of errors that I'm talking about. You're trying to pass in a data type that it doesn't expect. Now, technically, this actually just evaluates to 6 already. So it'd be basically the same thing as me typing some 6 here. And it's going to give me the exact same error. Like, you'll see if I run this again, same exact error. So that's what I'm kind of talking about here, is you're trying to pass in the wrong kind of data type for what the function is representing. And we can see through the type hinting that it expects an iterable, but you may not know what this terminology is. But it's perfectly okay to Google this stuff. I mean, or just, like, look it up in your textbook or ask whoever. Like, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know... Just be aware that if you're trying to do anything with the built-in functions in Python, like for example, print is also a built-in function in Python, and input is another built-in function in Python. Um, you know, when you're trying to do things with these functions, you may, you may oh, goodness gracious, you may be trying to pass in the wrong kind of data type, and that's where you're going to get type errors. Now, going back to what we were talking about before about object methods, like the upper thing, this is where you start running into attribute errors. So Let's flip the script here, and let's try to do upper on the 3. It's already highlighting this, but let's just go ahead and run it for the sake of fun. So, see, we're going to get a syntax error because, well, 3, that doesn't make any sense. Upper, like, hello? But if this was, like, another custom object, for example, like, let's go ahead and import turtle here. So, because I think this will be easier to show on a custom object, not one that's built into Python, because Python already knows what we're trying to do, and it's saying, hey, you're stupid. So let's try to import turtle here, and let's just say Tallulah it's equal to turtle dot turtle. So now we have our turtle here. So I can say, whoops, I can say Tallulah dot upper, and notice there's no highlighting here, so it oh, should be fine. So let's go ahead and run this. And, uh, oh, here we go. Attribute error turtle object it has no attribute upper uh, i don't know why i mean it works here why doesn't it work here well the thing is if we look into the turtle code which is kind of hard to do because it is like you, it's hard to understand at this level of python but if we looked at the turtle code what we would see is that the turtle code doesn't actually have any methods whoops doesn't actually have any methods of upper so we can actually utilize the help function. This is what I really want to show you guys. The help function will actually tell us like what methods and attributes this turtle object has. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's try to use our Tallulah. I may have to use the turtle.turtle .turtle part, but we'll see if this works. We're both learning together here. So let's utilize the help function. I don't need to see this. It's fine. Okay, so see it works. So... Um, Let's just spam the enter key so we can get through all this. And then we will... Um, it's just rendering more and more and more of it, but we'll see until we're done, and then I can scroll through it. It's quite a lot. Quite a lot. Wow. Just keeps going, huh? There's a lot of stuff you can do. So... Probably should have included some kind of, like, editing screen thing here like cutting this crap out okay well i didn't expect it to have this much documentation oh jesus there it is okay so all right let's just make this way big so anyway what i wanted to show you is this is an alphabetical order so actually we're almost exactly where we need to be so the upper method would be starting with a u and notice it doesn't have an upper method like these are all the methods that you can do with the turtle see it says that this returns the turtle's angle, and this is the x-coordinates, this is the y-coordinates, and these are the set position, kind of set heading, right, left, radians, you know, all that stuff. So, the help function, this is probably a bad example, you're probably like, I don't want to use that, look how long that took. But the help function will actually tell you what you can and can't do with an object or a data type that you're working with. So, let's try that now. Um, <laughs> let me go back. So let me make my terminal not so huge. So um, so let's do that with the integer. Let's see what we could have done with the integer. So 
let's put in int here. That's the name of the data type. And now we're going to try to see what information we can get out of not specifically this three, but specifically these kinds of data types. So let's see what we can do with integers. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to just kill this line so it doesn't open a turtle window for us. Um, so let's see. So this is the integer object, and it kind of tells us a little bit about integers here. And it says methods defined here. So we have an absolute value uh, method. We have the add method. We have the bool method, and that's just telling us, like, you know, whether it's going to return true or false, basically. Um, and then here are some things that we can do using the, like, integer method. Now, integers really aren't the best example because there's not really a lot of methods that you can actually do with integers. But let's look at, say, for example, your string variables. So we already saw the list of methods. You saw it with capitalized and upper and all that. But if you really want to read the documentation on these within your own thing without having to Google it, and maybe get stuck on some malware site or something. Um, I would recommend utilizing the Python official docs. It's just python.org and then slash docs or something. But basically just go to python.org and you can kind of look around and get to the official docs. But if you want to look at it within your own text editor or within your own Python shell, you can do that. So again, let's just go ahead and skip through this so it renders everything. And then we can kind of go back and look through it. So ideally, you would just keep rendering as you're reading, but, you know, in this case, we're just going to render all of it, and then we'll scroll through it. So, whoops, there we go, we're done. All right. So, let's see the upper function that we just used. Let's see if I know how to pass kindergarten. Here we go, upper. It says, returns a copy of the string converted to uppercase. Notice the terminology here, it's very specific. It returns a copy. A copy of the string not modifying the exact string it's just returning a copy of it so um, again if we do word dot upper here and we set a variable equal to that then now this variable is actually just going to equal word in all caps it's going to be a new string that's just word in all caps so anyway that's when you start getting attributes basically now, in the next part of this video, I'm going to end it here. In the next video, we're going to talk about assertion errors and specifically how to understand unit testing and the unit test code. And we're going to go over the test conditions file as an example. Um, and we're going to kind of just really dive deep into that because I really want you guys to understand what your errors are when you're getting these errors. And that's a little more specific to the Python class specifically. So in that case, I think it would make more sense to cover it as its own specific video instead of just in a more general Python video. So I hope you found this helpful. Please leave me feedback. I'm always happy to have feedback on my informational stuff. But either way, hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks.